Oh man, when I see these skincare mistakes happen, I just about shudder. I'm going to be sharing with you the worst things you can possibly do to your mature skin and so many of us do it. So let's get into the video. Hello there friends. Let me tell you how this video was born. The other night my husband got home from work and he went in and took a shower and as usual the whole entire room steams up and that bathroom is so hot it's as hot as a sauna. And he got out of the shower and when I looked at him his skin from head to toe was bright red. And I thought oh my goodness that's the worst thing you can possibly do for your skin. Thus, this video was born and I thought, what are the worst things that a mature woman can do for her skin? And I came across these. So as always, when we get into these videos, if I show you products, they're going to be numbered and there will be a number that comes up on the screen right here. You don't have to worry about jotting the product down. Let's just jot that little number down right there. And then you can go into the description box open that up and next to the number that you've jotted down will be the product and the link and you can just find your product that you are interested in that way. And also, as always, I like to share my shirt and my earrings, my jewelry with you. I can definitely do that today. I'll put up a full length. It's got a little bell sleeve and a little tie at the waist. It's so cute. The fabric's really light. I love the print on it. And then my two necklaces, my earrings, which are a little silver hoop with a lotus flower on it. Very dainty. I really like these. These are super light and I believe that they are 925 silver. So as I've already said, the number one thing that I can think of that would be the worst thing that you can do for mature skin is using steaming hot water on your face or your body. Now I am just like you guys, I like a very, very warm shower or bath and there's nothing wrong with that, but I would highly caution you not to do that on your face and I would try really hard not to get your skin very hot. What happens is that heat, it will make the moisture on your skin evaporate. On your face, it can do a lot of damage to your skin's barrier. You want to make sure that that skin's barrier is intact. That is the shield that keeps the moisture in on your skin and that moisture is what makes us look plumped up and helps us to look younger. So if you are using a lot of heat on your skin, you're drying your skin out. If you do have a time when you feel like your skin's barrier is disrupted or your skin is so super dry that it really is having a hard time, you might think about trying my one of my Holy Grail products that I've talked about for years and years. This is from Suko Yakasuhara and this is their moisture, Urea Moisture Cream. I get the, the question all the time whether or not urea is made of urine. It is not. It is a byproduct of urine, yes, but it is manufactured in a lab to mimic that in this product. And this is wonderful. This is a very thick, very heavy cream. I wear this underneath my eyes every single night and on my forehead because I am so, so dry. And I cannot tell you what this has done and how this has saved my skin time and time again when my skin has felt so dehydrated. This is a very heavy, very tacky product. So if you're not somebody that can handle very heavy products in their skincare, please don't get disappointed and buy this. They do have a lotion, an essence that you can use, and they also have an eye cream. I use both of those products every day. I use the eye cream underneath my makeup every single morning. It plumps up my eyes and makes them look their very best. And then the lotion or the essence I use in my skincare routine in the morning to keep the moisture in. But it is a fantastic moisturizer, and I don't know if you can see the difference in my hands right here or not, but it is one of the best moisturizers I've ever used. I swear by it and it's something that I will never be without have two backups in these drawers right back here too. I'm never without any of these three products. So the second worst thing that you can do for mature skin with your skincare is getting very aggressive with your exfoliating. Now I understand this part. If you have skin that is shedding, you don't want to see that dead skin. You want to get it off as much as you can. And I understand the inclination to want to rub that off. I get it. But when we do that, we might be damaging that skin barrier again and keeping our skin from repairing itself. And that's definitely not what we want to do. You want to 
use a chemical exfoliation or you want to use a very gentle physical exfoliation. One of my very favorites is from Pixie and it's called the Hydrating Milky Peel. Now what's so great about this is it just has little cellulose in it. So it's actually not anything gritty. It's just like little plant-based things that just kind of roll around and kind of catch that dead skin and really help take it off at the same time of still keeping it very hydrated. But my very best suggestion would be to try something that is chemical. I do have a couple here that I like a lot. One is from Drunk Elephant and this is the TLC Sukari Baby Facial. You leave it on for up to 20 minutes and then you rinse it off with water and you can really tell a difference almost immediately of your skin and how how nice and soft it feels. A little bit stronger one is the Ordinary's AHA BHA. This is a 30% ACE. AHA and a 2% BHA. This is very strong. This is at up to 10 minutes. When I started using this, I would put it on my skin and my skin would start to tingle and itch and I could only use it for a couple minutes and I had to take it right off. So you might be able to use it for longer than that. It just really depends on how tolerant your skin is of these kinds of things. I only use this very rarely. Um, I use one or the other of these like every other week. I don't use that very often. But what I do use and what I do like very much is an every other day or if your skin is kind of tough an every day toner that is the glycolic acid and this is from the ordinary and this is the seven percent toning solution i've used this for years and years and i love it pixie also has their glow tonic which is a very gentle form of this so you could use that one as well if you like pixie's products the number three worst skincare mistake that you could possibly make for mature skin is not taking your makeup off at night and i get this one i know that you can be so dead dog tired at night you just want to crawl in bed you don't want to think about skincare you don't want to think about anything but if you do that and you don't take your makeup off at night you're doing yourself a huge disservice for two reasons first of all that makeup is going to go into your pores and it's going to clog your pores it's got dirt on it from the day it's got all of the stress from the day you know we talk about free radical stress on our skin that's what's on our skin from the whole entire day so you want to remember that it is really i mean even if you're super tired go in there there, take two seconds and just take that makeup off and put a moisturizer on. That's all you really need to do. But I do want to stress to you that it's really important to get all of the makeup off. So I want to suggest to you a couple of my favorites. I actually don't have several of my favorites that I've used for years and years. That is the Good Molecules Cleansing Balm. It takes off makeup like a dream. I also love the Hada Labo Cleansing Oil. It is beyond wonderful. But I'm trying to use up other products that I have. A good substitute for the Good Molecules molecules balm which i'm trying to use up right now is the elf makeup melting cleansing balm this is really good it's not quite as good as the good molecules in taking off your makeup but it's a good second place and another one that i absolutely love that i've re-fallen in love with very recently is from sephora and this is their waterproof eye makeup remover but it will take off every bit of makeup that you have all over your face if you want to use it all over your face as your makeup remover instead of any of those balms or oils. Now you definitely don't want to stop there because you're going to have oil on your face after you've taken your makeup off because that's what you've just taken it off with. You want to go in and you want to double cleanse your face which means you want to use a regular cleanser. CeraVe has a really great one. My, one of my very favorites ever is from The Ordinary and it's their squalling cleanser. I feel like this one a lot of people say that this one is a little bit too heavy for them so if it is you know feel free to use whatever cleanser you like any regular cleanser that doesn't say makeup melting or balm or oil or anything like that is really going to do the trick for taking that off now the secondary reason for taking your makeup off is at night our skin is at its most beneficial to repair itself it's going to do everything it needs to just like our bodies need rest our skin needs rest and it repairs itself at night and that's the beauty of whatever we choose to put on our face next. But the one thing that I would think would be the worst thing that you could do for your mature skin in your skincare is skipping a Retin-A product. So that's number four. If you're skipping a Retin-A product, this is a problem because as we age, the collagen, which makes us look plump and youthful underneath our skin, breaks down so quickly. Well, vitamin A, which is retinol products, any of them, retin-A, retinols, retinoids, 
any of those, it's the only vitamin that can penetrate our skin and actually has been proven to build back that youthful collagen. So don't skip on it. If you've never used it before and you want to start out, I suggest that you start out with a retinol product and use a retinol product to see how your skin is going to respond. A few of my very, very favorites are The Ordinary's Green Active Retinoid 5%. I think this, this is in squalane, by the way. So you want to use it after you use your serums. This is a fantastic fantastic product. I use this in conjunction with vitamin C and that might seem counterintuitive. A lot of people have said, no, you can't use vitamin A, which is retinoid with vitamin C, but they found that vitamin A, vitamin C and vitamin E are beautiful together because they work synergistically, synergistically, synergistically in order to really help our face get the maximum potential it can from those vitamins. So vitamin C boosts vitamin A, vitamin E helps soothe and protect. So all those vitamins together can do such a good job. And there are so many products on the market for that kind of thing. Also, I love this new cacao oil that I got. Cacao oil and rosehip seed oil, those are two oils that that are packed with vitamin A. So you can put a couple of drops into your moisturizer or whatever you wanna do, and your skin, I am not kidding, I have felt such a difference in my skin and the softness and how I feel like my skin just feels supple after using this in the morning. I just feel like it's wonderful. Now you can use a prescription Retin-A product, which is the actual Trentinoin. That is a very powerful product. It's the most powerful that you can probably get. And you need a prescription from a dermatologist or your doctor. That can get a little bit costly. I suggest you start out with 0.25 on that. I have a few videos about that that I can link for you down in the description box as well. I recently stopped using my Retin-A because I was just finding that I wasn't getting a lot of benefits from it and I was getting a lot of irritation. As I went into menopause, it was just becoming a really big problem for me. My friend Sherry from Graceful Beauty, if you don't know who she is, you have to watch this girl because she loves skincare and she's a wealth of information. This is a very expensive treatment and I would not even mention this if it wasn't such a game changer for me because I don't feel like this is for everybody because I know that not everybody can afford it. From Truth Treatments, the Truth Treatment Systems, this is the Regenerating 5% Retinol Gel. And I started out with the 1% and then I went to the 5%. Now I have had this for probably, I'm almost going on a whole year of having this. And do you see how little is gone in here? I do not use this every night. I don't use it every other night. I don't even use this once a week. I use this about every 10 days. This gel is so strong that as soon as I use it, even though I use all of those other retinol products, as soon as I use this within two days, I'm shedding and I am noticing a really good shed. I'm noticing that my skin is really rejuvenating itself. This is a powerhouse. I start, I tell you to start out with the 1% if you want to try it because really honestly, this is for somebody that has been long term all the way up to the 0.1%, the strongest prescription Trentinoin that you can get. This is a little bit, I mean, it's a powerhouse. It's just one of those things that I just can't say enough good about because I feel like it completely changed my skincare game. But I do know that this isn't for everybody, one, because of the cost, and two, because it is that strong. But I wanted to mention it because I don't use prescription anymore because my skin was so sensitive. And this seems to be, you know, I still get the good shed, but I don't get the irritation and I don't get the hurt that I got from the prescription before. And so that being said about Retin-A, let's talk about the number five worst mistake you can make on your mature skin is not using SPF. You skip the SPF because you don't have time. You skip it because it doesn't look good underneath your makeup. You skip it because it makes you feel oily and greasy, whatever the reason. Oh my goodness, please stop. Please stop doing that. My family were sun worshipers. All of my aunts laid out in the sun. My mother laid out in the sun for two hours a day sometimes, specifically because she just loved that look of that deep, deep tan. And the old saying that I've always heard is brown fat is prettier than white fat. And I get it. I'm a white baby. My legs and my behind could blind somebody from a mile away, I swear. But that SPF not only is a game changer, but it's a 
life saver. We don't want to look older either and that's what's really aging us is all of that sun damage and I have super bad sun, sun damage here down my chest, my arms. I just have really been battling that as I've gotten into my skincare routine. So that is one of the things that I want to just pound into you. Come on, let's do use our SPF. Let's do that every single day. And if you're not reapplying it, we have a problem there too. So I do have several products that I will tell you about for SPF. I just recently found this Thank You Farmer that is an SPF of 50. And I do know that this is a chemical um, SPF, but I love wearing this because it doesn't pill underneath my makeup. I also have found that the Dermatology Universal Tinted Moisturizer SPF of 46 that doesn't pill underneath my makeup either. If you're looking for something that is a little bit more cost effective th than these two are, there is one that is the Australian Gold Tinted Moisturizer and it has a super high SPF and it acts a lot like this. It's actually uh, very, very close. It's just a little bit thicker. And then also Can Make um, makes a mermaid gel SPF that's fabulous. And all of them have a higher SPF. I like my SPFs to have 50 plus. Now this one only has 46, but I do like to have them as much as possible. And then when you're talking about making sure you re reapply every two to three hours. So I do keep this Derma E powder in my bag. As you can see, there's just the powders right here. And then you pull that off and you have a brush right there. And you can see in the middle that the powder is coming out from the middle. I also usually do keep a little uh, Milani prep set and go, and it has the SPF in it. It might be the protect set and go but it's a spray on that you can use as well. So that's it. That's the five worst skincare mistakes you can do for a mature face or mature skin and how to avoid them and how to change them in your skincare routine. I hope that you did enjoy the video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you think of anything that is a really bad mistake that we make on our faces as we age. I would love to hear that from you. And as we go, I will put up a video right here. Another one of maybe some skincare products that you have not heard of in the past, more affordable skincare that I use that you might really like. And I'll put that right here so that you can see it. Hope everybody is happy, healthy, doing very well. Come back around. We'll be together again in my next video. Take care of yourselves. Love you much. Bye-bye, my friends.